we're supposed to be homesteading out here. I mean, we're not supposed to be, this isn't supposed to be, you know, eat chips garage. This is supposed to be a homestead and there are other things I want to get done. And the past year has made it almost impossible to get anything done between issues with the vehicles and uh, Dyna, our backhoe and stuff like that. I really want to get this stuff taken care of and over with so that I'm primed and ready to be able to, you know, really begin building the house in earnest and, you know, a, a, a greenhouse and things like that, like I want to do. So. <music> Well, hi folks, it's E-Chip here with Contentment, and it is a beautiful uh, winter's day. It's, uh, it's the middle of January, but uh, it's a beautiful 43 degrees out here with no wind, the sun's shining. It's awesome. And uh, so I thought I'd get out here and take care of maintenance uh, on the truck. Such an oil or, you know, residue or something here on the side of the engine is not exactly clean like I like it. And... I mean, I've had a problem with the um, the power steering pump leaking uh, right here at this little fitting because the roads we're on are just so bumpy that it's beginning to shake everything loose on this truck, which is why I had to replace that EGR sensor a while back in the prior video. Um, it's just running on rough roads is really hard uh, on these vehicles. I'll take some engine degreaser here. I have a couple of cans of that. I'll squirt down the engine real well, then I'll run it over uh, around the way over here and uh, blast that, blast the, uh, the, the degreaser off with a hose. We'll clean this up. We'll check it out tomorrow. In the meantime, uh, with a little bit of light we've got left here today, might be able to jump on to... Uh, Dyna here for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to think. I mean, we've got a brand new engine here, brand new ignition system, brand new batteries. And, you know, when we first, last year when we first uh, got it going, everything was doing great. Now we've developed leaks all over the place and, you know, the transmission. If you guys have been following, you know, we got transmission problems needs to be rebuilt so that will be a winter project but i have another issue I, for whatever reason i don't know why i switched the ground wire uh, i got a new ground wire uh, for the battery because the other one was too small causing me problems but and then i switched a couple of wires around when i was doing some work on gauges and somehow i've lost ground so i've got to fix that issue so i think i may use like this stud right here um or something like that clean that up really good and use it as like a negative a common negative post uh, or something like that that I can send all ground wires to and then hopefully we'll get better ground I get a spark from the coil right here to the uh, coil wire that goes into the top of the distributor however I don't get a spark at the ends of the actual spark plug cables so there's something going on and i haven't touched this at all so there's either something going on in here where i've got corrosion or something like it's preventing the spark from getting to the spark plugs or uh it could be a ground issue and I'm, my suspicion is it's a ground issue since i'm playing uh, since i've been playing around with the ground uh, on this thing so but i'll check it make sure that we don't have any corrosion or anything weird going on in there on the positive side of the coil, we're getting almost 14 volts, which is great. It needs to be at least 10 and a half. So my guess is the coil's good. There's one more test we got to do, though. Okay, so the next test would be to pull the distributor cap off. Hopefully you get no dirt in it. Okay. And I've got to be able to get down to the distributor plate. So this has got to come off. Ugh, didn't want to come off easily. There we go. I gotta remember that's pointing in this direction. I'll put back on. There's a little can that should have it right. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off. 
this, I don't know if you can see it, this little metal plate in here. It, I set up my ohm meter. Ohms measures impedance or resistance. If I take a, a, a wire and run it directly from the negative pole on the battery and hook it to uh, my tester here, okay? And then I put the other lead directly on that plate if there's more than two tenths of an ohm of resistance, then there's a problem with the ignition. Uh, so we'll check that out. There is a certain amount of resistance between these two leads. Um, the wires themselves to the leads um, would would create a little bit of resistance. So if I if I touch them together, it's going to show the resistance dropping until finally we go to zero. So really there's no appreciable resistance in these lines. And you would have to take that into consideration if you're measuring something as small, you know, measuring for something as small as two tenths of an ohm. Because it could give you a false reading if you don't take into consideration the actual amount of resistance that's in this wire. I'll stick a probe here on this plate, this aluminum plate. I don't think I'm going to be able to I don't have enough hands to hold the camera and stuff. I'll tell you what the reading is, but there's the negative batter, uh, battery terminal. So I'll go ahead and hook it up and see what I get. Okay, so the reading was six tenths of an ohm. It did jump around a little bit, but I didn't finally settled down. There for a moment it was a two tenths, and then it, I don't know, six tenths of an ohm it says. Uh, well, then, that, then I have a ground issue. In other words, something here is not grounding properly. Uh, something in this whole system, not just the ignition, is not grounding properly. And we've got to find out what the, uh, where it is. So that means I get to go through the whole system and play with ground wires and hook them up. I don't know, something I was meaning to do right the second time anyway. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. Well, hello, doggies. How are you? Roscoe and Reba, you may remember. We're just out here enjoying the day. Uh, it's been a week since uh, we last looked at Rusty. We still have a, a small leak here with the power steering pump. I think I just need to unscrew that and replace an O-ring to fix that. And I have the O-ring for that, so that, that should be okay. I uh, don't think I told you last time but uh, was backing this thing up the other day and heard a clunk, well, a while back, and I heard a clunk. And I thought, oh boy, something in the front end. And sure enough, I looked in here. I, I grabbed this, because I, I could tell it was on the left side, but I, I couldn't tell exactly how. I grabbed this wheel and, oh, it's not doing it now, but I was able to just move that wheel. And that's abnormal. So I found out the problem. The problem is, Reba, out of the way now, that right there, that um, radius arm bushing. Oh, Reba wants to be in the action. That radius arm bushing right there has a spacer in it that's cracked. And uh, that whole thing needs to be replaced. The, the bushing and everything. I've got that, but that won't be fun. Um, you know, it's funny. These, as I say, these roads are tearing up the vehicles. This front end was just totally redone two years ago when we got the truck. We put a brand new steering box in it, new bushings, uh, seals, you know, shocks, all that kind of stuff. And uh, the roads out here are just tearing up the front end. Um, it was about six months ago, Robber was driving this. Okay, Reba, out, out. Reba, uh, uh, Robber was driving this. And it was a good thing she was in a parking lot <clears throat> because the uh, the front end just came apart. This tie rod right here that is responsible for steering the wheels in tandem. And this right here, which is what they call a, a drag link. Uh, this just, it just came apart right there. And as you can see, there's a lock on this that keeps this collar from turning and keeps the thing from coming apart. But vibration being what it is on these roads, it just 
you know, it just, it literally vibrated this so bad that it wore the thread smooth. And the thing finally pulled apart when you tried to turn the wheel. It's the strangest thing. I mean, I realize these things happen, but, uh, you know, and I know that this is a Ford with its famous twin I-beam front suspension, which is notorious for problems. This is actually the last year they made it, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, we had to have that put in because I just couldn't do it at the time. And that was a nice chunk of change just for this little rod and that drag link. It was, uh, or was that drag link? Uh, it was uh, like five, $600, which is just crazy. But uh, it needed to be done. We couldn't drive it. So, anyway, I I'm just telling you, these rough roads are tearing up our vehicles. Uh, that left door over there rattles a little bit, so I need to make an adjustment on it, on its little post that it latches to. I loosened that nut before I raised up the truck, put it on a jack, and that kind of stuff. The last thing you want is to have to be rocking the truck, trying to get that thing loose while it's on a jack. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, one other thing I've got to do is replace a starter while I'm underneath there, it's starting to act up. Now, speaking of rough roads, I picked up a couple of implements that I hope uh, will help things out a little bit here. I mean, I, I can't use these on the county road, obviously, and those are graded regularly. But we have almost two miles of, uh, you know, driveway out here to contentment. And it was getting really rough and washboardy. So I got this. I picked this up uh, from an acquaintance, a friend, here in the valley who is a farmer. And uh, what this is is a blade for what they call a ditcher. The blade normally sits at an angle like this with its point toward the ground and it's mounted inside of a frame and it can be adjusted forward back the tilt on it anyway and then what it does is it cleans out a ditch in a v-shape as it goes along as it's pulled along on either side on the wheels sit on either side of the ditch bank so that's good because i can you know i just hook it up to a chain and drag it out there on the road and at least knock out a lot of the the um the high spots and things like that. The thing that worries me about it though is because of its shape, it kicks all the dirt out to the edges of the road. So over time it can tend to, you know, dig a channel <laughs> and I don't want that. So I want to try to find another way to use it. Perhaps maybe tow it backward or something. I don't know, we'll see. And then uh, this is an old bent up and beat up uh, harrow that, um, or a part of a harrow about a five foot wide piece that I just drag behind the truck and, you know, sort of smooth out the road a little bit every once in a while. So they seem to work okay. But uh, like I said, the truck's still getting torn up. I, you know, I have to admit it. I, I kind of like doing this. I, I don't like having to do it because um, there are a lot of things I've got to do. And this is just, you know, this is just an annoyance for me, but I don't mind doing the work. And I can do it safely uh, out here with the tools I have. And that's important, folks. Uh, if you take the proper safety measures and safety precautions when you're working, like the jack stand, like making sure that the jack stand levers turn the opposite way, you know, stuff like that, um, then I, I promise you <laughs> the job will go a lot more smoothly uh, and easily. So anyway, I'm gonna get this button back up. This door over here. Is a, is a little loose because the the post, the latch post is this is a, you know, turned or something. So it's got an eccentric on it. So uh, I'll get the proper rinse that we need for that. So anyway, what you do is you adjust this in or out Keep trying the door until it latches the way you want it to without rattling. And uh, make sure at the same time you get a good seal on the door seal. So that's how you do it. We're good. Okay, so it's getting a little cold out there. So I think I'll uh, finish up for the night and hopefully I can get the rest of those things done with Rusty tomorrow. We've got a starter. We've got to uh, replace the oil pan gasket and change the oil. And uh, 
I've got to um, fix that leak. We need to put some new O-rings in where that uh, power steering uh, motor is. Power steering pump. Anyway, see you later. Hi, folks. Well, it's about a week later. Time to dig into uh, Rusty again. There's a few more things we've got to do. And then I think we'll be done with everything that Rusty needs. <laughs> then we'll move on to the Dodge and what it needs. And then we'll move on over to Dyna over there. But um, before I get started, I need to install... Hello, Roscoe. What are you doing, Roscoe? I need to install this lock on the container over there. And I'll tell you why. This, this is our container. Uh, showed it to you before. We've got a lot of stuff in there. We got a lot of tools uh, and just, you know, household goods, building materials, all kinds of stuff in there. And uh, we don't want it stolen. Last weekend, after I, the last time I got through working on uh, Rusty, it got really cold. It got down to zero overnight. And that was on Saturday night. And um, so the dogs came inside the house uh, for the night. And... I'm a little concerned that they didn't alert, but on Sunday, as I was getting ready to go to church, driving out the driveway over there, I noticed some footprints uh, in the driveway. And the footprints went back about a thousand feet down the driveway. So apparently somebody parked down there during the night, zero degree weather, walked a thousand feet up this road, walked around the container, walked around the travel trailer over there, walked over here onto the house pad in front of the house and checked things out and then turned around and left. So we were broken into right after we built the house um, and they got quite a few things. We never leave contentment unattended for that reason. But I mean, sometimes we gotta, we gotta be out of here. So um, this container was locked when he came by. He found this lock, which is not great. He'd come in here with bolt cutters and cut it right off. Um, so the people who rent the container uh, told us that this lock ought to do us real well. It goes up inside of this uh, block right here, and that makes it really hard to cut, drill, uh, or anything. I mean, they'd need a cutting torch, basically, to, uh, to get in here and, and cut that. So... So it was expensive because it's a specialty lock, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, see how it fits. Window washer uh, pump. It's not pumping fluid to the windshield anymore. And I don't know if that's because it's the, the motor, the little motor pump motor's gone out in there or uh, whether it's clogged or something like that. The problem is not that there was any clog at all. It's that the line became detached. <laughs> So this ought to be a pretty easy fix on this end where it connects to the hose. I put a little black RTV. I smeared it around the end of the hose, not near the hole, so that when you push this on, it doesn't clog, you know, it doesn't build up inside the hole and clog it. Um, so I'll slide that on. And then for the other end, I've got, I happen to, I keep anything like this that I pull off a machine, a little hose clamp. And that'll that'll clamp it to the reservoir. So while I'm waiting on an RTV, let's get in here and replace an O-ring on this power steering uh, pump thing because it's making a mess all over the front part of the engine on this side. This is right about the time when auto, uh, American automobile manufacturers are switching over from SAE measurements to metric measurements. So this is an 18 millimeter. This outer one. It's got to be removed. Okay, 24 millimeter socket. Get in there. I'm trying to do this without having to remove a bunch of stuff. Ugh, there you go. Now that we got done with that, let's uh, before we move on to anything else, let's try those windshield wipers. Hey, hey. Well, one of them sprang. I have some fluid, fresh fluid that I'll put here in this. And then the piece de resistance. <laughs> the job I haven't really been looking forward to. Even though I don't mind working on stuff, I kind of like it. It's just not something I look forward to doing.
So, putting it up on these stands makes it easier to climb underneath here and work on it. But I think that leak is on the uh, back side of the engine here. I think we've discovered the source. Uh, I think. It's either... I think... I think it's this oil pressure sensor right here. So... While I'm in here, I can loosen it, put a little thread goo on it, and stick it back in. See if that fixes the problem. But it may also be this cover. I don't know. And I'll, I'll take a wrench and tighten that and see if that helps. Uh, I really just don't want to tear into the, <laughs> the engine too much here. i got a lot to do. Uh, but here's the problem with the oil pan. It will not just come out. Okay? This cross member here, this frame cross member, uh, gives you a little bit of space here to lower the pan, but because of the engine components that hang down, it will not allow you to actually pull the pan out, which really stinks, because that's what I want to do. I want to be able to do that, you know, and clean it real good and stuff like that. Just not going to be able to. But uh, that's why I hesitate to do this uh, later in the day, because uh, it, it's going to take some time to do. Well, by the way, uh, last week I got the new I got a new starter installed. Starter was causing issues. It's time to replace it. Okay. Got to find a place to put these besides in the sand. Okay. Well, I've got the pan detached and cleaned up as best as I could get it. I wanted the outside clean because when I go to handling this thing, I need to keep my hands clean. I need to keep the new gasket clean and everything else. So anyway, I got in there, sprayed some brake fluid, brake parts cleaner up in there. Cleaned both the inside surface here and the surface of the uh, engine block all the way around as best I could. And uh, now I have to fit the new gasket around it, uh, which is no fun because everything's in the way and everything's dirty. So we'll get it worked out. Well, there it is. New gasket's in, and uh, I gotta fill it with oil. It's starting to get cold out here. The sun's getting low. We've got the, <laughs> we've got the uh, oil pan gasket replaced. We got that, um, the oil change. We've got that uh, cover on the side of the engine. Hopefully tightened up enough. We've cinched it down so maybe it won't uh, leak oil on that side of the engine anymore. I do need to finish uh, the uh, windshield wiper issue here, uh, this, the washer, and I think that's it for a while for Rusty. I think we've got the maintenance pretty well done here. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon. I'm looking inside the uh, brake uh, fluid reservoir, and that fluid is looking... It's looking a little dark. Uh, it should be clear. Or, or if it's fresh, it would be clear. So maybe it's time to bleed the brakes, but I will do that when we do the brakes uh, because we're about due for brakes on this thing now. So done uh, with Rusty for a little while anyway. After this, I'll turn my attention to the Dodge truck and get some maintenance done on it. And then Dyna. Uh, we've We've really got to get Dyna um, into a reliable condition uh, because I've got a lot of stuff I need to do and it requires Dyna. So, anyway, I, and then also uh, Dumpy over here, our Ford F600. I think we're going to sell it, but there's still a few things that need to be done to it. Uh, some issue with wiring and the horn and stuff like that. And if I can get those things done, I can probably make a little bit more money on it. <clears throat> So that's what I will do. Winter is a good time to, uh, you know, do maintenance on these vehicles. The only problem is, is that here at Contentment, I have to work outside. It has been, the sun has been shining, uh, but it has been, the temperature actually has been below freezing all day. And as you can see, it's not too bad to work in this way. Um, I'm just wearing a hoodie and a t-shirt underneath. 
and uh, it's I've been pretty comfortable except when I was underneath the truck it got kind of cold because there was no sun on me but that's what it's like here and working in sand really got to get a shop building so that we can work uh, on these on vehicles and and things like that indoors so anyway that I guess I hope ends our saga with uh, with Rusty at least for a little while if you like this channel please uh, like subscribe share tell others about us and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video take care thanks <laughs>